महागणपत मनसा स्मरा महादेव मुद शिसा नमा महागणपत मनसा स्मरा There are uh, two types of prapti. Prapti means achievement, gain. Even though there are many things you want to gain in terms of getting hold of something. a title money power you want a qualification a skill there are all things to be gained prapti then there is also getting rid of something there is also prapti so yeah a good recovery from illness that's a prapti so what is lost you want to get it back in terms of health wealth and so on so that is prapti so whole life is committed to prapti fulfilling a want so that i am wanting is constant kabhi kabhi i don't remember myself at that time i'm happy otherwise i am what i need to remember myself in order to be wanting so when i remember myself i am want when i don't remember myself i am okay <laughs> so this is a great uh, fact and so now the, the once you remember yourself and you find yourself wanting then the answer to the problem is when you remember yourself you should not be wanting correct ha ah. <laughs> therefore when you remember yourself you should be happy that is the whole struggle in life in one sentence when you remember yourself you find you are wanting you struggle you want to achieve this you want to achieve that and you if you can't achieve at least you redo your hair <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and what else you can do you can't do anything this is the only thing that is there by the time being that also may not be there sometimes <laughs> so as long as this is there i can redye it and i can condition it i can do all this and so so this there's all what i can do i can't do anything better and therefore you go to head dresser and so head dresser no more head cutting you know <laughs> head cut in the he they only knew one thing <laughs> so they crew cut so we go and sit there and then you come back unloaded <laughs> you know <laughs> Two pounds less. That that the only hair cut it was there. There was one fellow called here Morari, and there was one Brimichari. I had one Brimichari from Ceylon, and he was always he had a flowing hair, and he was very conscious about this hair. Always he looks at, and you can even as he walks, you can see this is whole his pride, his respect. self respect all of them are loaded in a bunch of hair <laughs> this is that, that was very noxious to me and uh, so i i i wanted this 
fellow to cut the hair <laughs> and so that was my project <laughs> and he was my student so he was my student i never bothered about his vedanta <laughs> so vedanta will not come unless you get rid of your hair <laughs> so your pride your self respect this putting everything in hair bag so that's not a very happy thing he can't get he can't get vedanta <laughs> so you need to be a more or less a satisfied person. Therefore, I wanted to, I wanted to, wanted him to, one time at least get rid of his hair. <laughs> I told him, I told him in so many words. I think you should see yourself. Without this long hair, and you, and then you should face that reality. One day I told you, you have to face the reality of yourself without the hair. That's a that's going to be a very, 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 very difficult reality to deal with. He said, No, sir, I can face. All right, please do it. Do it. Then I arrange for this fellow, <laughs> Sri Babu, and then he doesn't know Hindi, and he is from Ceylon. Then I told him neither I knew Hindi, <laughs> and so with my little Hindi, I told him, "You do, thoda nikalo." So and that fellow, so he started. He had a, he had a, this, you know, hair cutting. Yes. <laughs> that, yes. Yeah, that is so. He started like this from behind. <laughs> and he went all the way down. There was nothing. He only wanted to cut the hair, the length of it. <laughs> but then, thoda sa nikalo, I said. And that fellow, he started, he knows only one thing. <laughs> In this case, he knows only one thing. If you go and sit, there's only one thing. Just whole thing you know. <laughs> That's all he knows. In, in, you cannot go and you cannot engage a barber in Rishikesh or in Tirupati <laughs> <laughs> unless you are ready to completely get rid of your hair. You cannot, man or woman, in Tripoli, it's the same. Here also it is the same. So they are used to that. So especially when this Brahmachari went and sat there, so he started, and then this fellow came running, he put his hand in it. The hand is all gone. So he came running to me. Swamiji, see what happened? <laughs> Exactly, this is what I wanted to do. <laughs> I don't want to do it. <laughs> right, doesn't matter. I'll cut the hair and that will cover it, don't worry. It will grow. Then I asked him to cut only that much and he cut. He came back. Then he had about himself a, a certain courage and objectivity and found something about himself that this is not right. And then next day he removed the whole thing <laughs> and came with a chutti. <laughs> ah. I said, now we can start Vedanta. <laughs> what else one can do? So people want to be somebody. Everybody wants to be somebody. So you remember yourself, you find yourself wanting. Wanting is common. I am wanting is common. What is it that's going to help you now? There is a want. Which consumes your attention, receives your attention, consumes your time, and that is the priority. 
the predominant one for a time being. It may be even food for a time being. Even though you may have various things going, but at the time when you are hungry, you cannot no more handle it. Then what you want is only food at that time. So there are like this immediate wants, just temporary. But when it is there, everything else stops. You pay attention to that. And there are ambitions, long, long-term goals, which can be achieved by achieving goals and goals. And you have so many short-term goals to achieve the long-term goal. Uh, they are called ambitions. And then there are, there's also an expression of want. Every pursuit born of desire is an expression of want for an ordinary human being. There are very few pursuits which are born out of your satisfaction. Sometimes born out of satisfaction also. Certain actions. Indians won the one day series in Australia. And people were celebrating. What they are doing we don't know. So neither they know. They just go on jumping. Hey, where do you jump? What is this jumping? So you ask him, are you jumping for anything? No. The whole action. And then this all that they do. And the, this champagne spray. And if there is no jumping, then they take a bucket of water and pour <laughs> on that fellow. The whole activity is meaningful. Only in this, it is an expression of the joy. When you are happy, sometimes you sing a song. Very rare. Whenever you sing a song, it is a diversion from depression. Sadness is a diversion. You want to divert yourself. You hum a song. But sometimes when you are happy, you sing a song. So there are all activities, expressions of happiness. But they are, they are, uh, they are not lasting. They are there for a few minutes. Afterwards, you come back to the reality, the reality of being a wanting person, okay? <laughs> come back to the reality of wanting person. So this wanting person, whenever he is happy, put it this way, the wanting person, he or she, he is happy at that time, the person is not wanting. Or the other way, whenever there is, there is absence of this wanting person, there is happiness. Therefore, wanting person is my self-identity. It's my self-identity. This is how I see myself as a wanting person. That is my self-identity. Therefore, Unless I forget my self-identity, I can't be happy. I had in my audience once yeah, a person sitting there, one woman. And when, when there is an occasion to laugh, and this person won't openly laugh, with the tight lips, she will laugh all right. <laughs> tight, tight lips. And then I knew 
that there is some complex. <laughs> this is dental complex. <laughs> <laughs> See, people do not accept the teeth. Neither the alignment or the color or the number. <laughs> So these people don't accept. When they don't accept, then there's a complex, therefore they become tightly. That means they remember themselves when they are laughing, okay? They remember themselves, themselves, because the dental, the dental situation is a part of self-identity. It is well ingrained complex. And therefore, when they remember themselves, they remember along with their teeth. And, and then, the, the, when they remember their teeth, so it's a, then it's a, there is alignment and the complex. That is why they have to remember. What they have accepted, they don't remember. What they don't accept, they remember. That's why you don't remember your back. Unless there is spondylitis. So you don't remember your back. Yeah, it keeps coming. There's nothing to remember. So the back is, who cares? About it? There is a back. Because there is a friend, there is a back. And so you don't remember. And therefore, it doesn't, back doesn't become a complex. Unless there is some kind of a hump or whatever. Normal back is not a part of your complex. It's not a source of conflict. But this dental situation becomes an integral part of self-identity and therefore it's always there. And then you become very cautious when you are laughing because the complex is there. Therefore, complex conditioned laughter. <laughs> you have to laugh when the situation is funny. So when the situation is funny, you have to laugh. But then you cannot give yourself away. And therefore, you laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and when that person is sitting far away and doing that, it's not a problem. I don't see. But when you sit right in front of me and keep your lips tight like that, then you become my project. <laughs> So I have to make this person laugh. There is no other way. I have so many slapstick jokes. One of them will get her. Slapstick means you don't think. You have got to laugh. And that kind of slapstick I have a few. And therefore, so when an occasion comes, I I relieve that slapstick, that nastram it is. And then she has to laugh. <laughs> then after laughing, she remembered, I gave yo. Then she tightens her lips. So, this is, this is, you can understand the human frailty. Frailty, thy name is human being, not woman. <laughs> ah, and that is Shakespeare. <laughs> Shakespeare also had this problem. He had two problems. One is, so frailty, the name is woman. And he, he wrote so many frail people of males also. What else was frail? But he, he never said man is frail, only Woman is frail. That was his problem. Frailty, the name is human. And another one is against Jews. He wrote that Merchant of Venice, and there he presented a Shylock as a Jew first, and then made us feel if you are a Jew, you will be merciless. That is how he presented. That's how we all picked up as children, studying all these stories. That I consider is wrong. And that was a mistake on his part. 
So, what I say? And perhaps he had caught the prejudice of people. He only was a playwright. He had caught the general prejudice of people. And this is a, this kind of a thing. We have a certain prejudices. So, you bring, therefore I say, the human being is frail, not woman is frail. A human being is frail. Lot of complexes, lot of things, because he's the, the person wants to be different. It's not that he wants to be frail wants to be f different from being free. That's the human problem. That I am wanting is the reality of my self-identity. That I, I want to be free from being wanting is my life of becoming. In this, my aim in the, uh, uh, always is to achieve prapti, to achieve an end. The end can be, the end is to be achieved. The end can be something that is an addition to myself. Avoidance of something, something reaching myself or getting rid of something from myself, these are the ends. To want, to possess, to experience is one thing. To avoid, to get rid of is another. Therefore, the ends are called prapti. Now all human beings are covered. Okay. We sit here on the banks of Ganga and then we have covered the whole humanity. I used to sit under a tree in those days and talk about these things. One American came. And I was uh, talking on in time and this and that in our Mondukya. This person comes and sits there. Then it was, there was nothing else. It's a jungle. Just you can imagine. It's very romantic. And uh, I'm, I'm sitting here under the tree. A few people are sitting around me. And I talk about timelessness and, <laughs> and infinite. What is infinite? And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a teaching, the core teaching. And this person just walks into this class. Because somebody said that there is one Swami and then from Shavan Ashram, this person walks into my life. Sits there. He, he, he's something like dream come true. I go to India and discover a Swami sitting under a tree, <laughs> talking English <laughs> and making sense. <laughs> okay. Making sense is not Swami's privilege, <laughs> but making sense because they use words, big, big words, and therefore it's not, it's not, it's not the usual thing of a Swami. And making sense. I, I also imagine that really true. 
Sitting at the tree, you don't expect somebody talk sense <laughs> in a language that the other person can understand. It's unheard of. Very romantic. Now here we are in a hall. You are not in a hall, I'm sitting under a tree. Oh, it's a it's highly spiritual romanticism. <laughs> Because you read in books. <laughs> and so we have covered the entire humanity in a few minutes. When I remember myself, I am unhappy. I'm struggling. Unhappy means. I'm struggling, I want to be different. I give myself to a life of becoming. That is going after prapti. One end is down, then another end is up. This is how we live our Life, suppose if one has lived 55 years, 55 years of gaining years, one end gone, another end, and another end, and another end. 55 years of efforts to gain years. Prapti. After 55 years, I see myself. Now what? <laughs> Swamiji, I'm retired now. Oh, there it is. What are you doing? Which name? Kabi Kabi consulted. Which name Bolega, then we'll Kabi Kabi consulted. So, <laughs> so, <you won't. laughs> so I am, I'm just. Uh, Spending time myself. Very difficult. Both lonely hai. And very lonely. Previously was not because he was doing something, thinking that he's going to achieve something. But now that kind of a doing and achieving is not there. And he has to live with himself. And that self is the old self. When he was five, when he was ten, when he was twenty, and the whole world is at his feet, when he was twenty, and then just coming out of teens, teens of course you need not talk about, and then twenty, thirty, then slowly graph goes down. What? <laughs> How are you getting on? <laughs> getting on, getting on, getting on, 55 years. <laughs> okay, yeah. Now what? 55 years of struggle. I make it 65. 65 years of struggle. And then you look back and look at yourself. Same person. Previously he was up and doing, now he cannot be doing as much as he did before. Now he has to take permission from his body. Previously whatever he decided, body followed. Now he has to follow the message of the body. Where he would say, so shall we go up? No, no. <laughs> distance <laughs> So we will go to Nilakanta. There is a Nilakanta issue. So Nilakanta. There are Rahu, Rahu Disha, Kedu Disha. So when it is there, you quit all these ideas. We will go or trekking, Himalaya. Rahu Disha started. Himalaya Buddhi Oro. Wanderlust. 
And so we go to Nilakan. No, Nilakan. Nilakan. Photograph taking. <laughs> So you have to take permission from the body. It has to say yes. Huh? Where do you, the person says, can you come to my house? Where are, where's your house? In the second floor. Kidri, <laughs> <laughs> So we need to change our lifestyle, everything. भारत देश हिताय कुरु सेवां तुम कुरु सेवां तुम कुरु सेवां तुम कुरु सेवां